Welcome, everybody. Uh, thank you for an introduction, Graham. So as you mentioned, uh, today we're going to go over a little bit of history uh, and, and technical knowledge about HTHA. How does it happen? Why does it happen? And also, um, what are the solutions out there to, to do this uh, type of inspection and actually prevent any um, major failure or disaster? So moving on, we'll be uh, covering today HTHA mechanism. How does it happen? As I said, uh, we'll also base our knowledge or um, methods of inspection on the uh, new revision of API 941. Uh, a bit of marketing for our product. Olympus uh, HTHA uh, probe kit as well as the Omniscan X3. Um, what makes it a great combo. Then two uh, study cases. Uh, as you may have seen, this presentation is courtesy of a colleague in Dubai. So thank you for that. Uh, conclusion, demonstration, and of course, a Q&A session where we will uh, answer all of the questions at the end of the presentation. HTHA mechanism. So first of all, it's it's really a buzzword these days. But just to be sure, everybody, we're uh, we're on the same page. What does that mean? What what does it do? So HTHA, high temperature hydrogen attack, uh, also called hot hydrogen attack, is a problem which concerns steels operating at elevated temperature, typically above uh, 400C in hydrogen environments, such as refinery, petrochemical, uh, other chemical facility, and also possibly uh, high pressure steam boilers. HTHA is the result of hydrogen dissociating and dissolving in the steel, uh, and then reacting with the carbon uh, to form methane bubbles. Uh, this causes uh, the fissures and cracking, which are typical of HTHA, and can also be seen in this uh, micro microstructural uh, image, basically where all the red arrows are pointing. Those are some micro structures, micro cracks. Uh, it's difficult to see here, but basically, trust me, it's very small. HTHA is the result of hydrogen service at elevated temperatures, uh, as mentioned previously, as well as pressure. The hydrogen reacts with the carbide and steel to form methane, CH4, which cannot diffuse through steel. So it is trapped there, basically. Uh, the loss of carbide causes overall loss of strength in the material. The methane pressure keeps building up, forming microfissures that may or may not, uh, depending on the stage, combine to form cracks. So the key factors leading to HTHA, uh, the ingredients to this uh, recipe, presence of hydrogen, presence of high pressure, high temperature, uh, some kind of stress, and also uh, the right ingredients uh, in the material. The stages, let's say, or the severity of the HTHA is divided in four stages, basically. From uh, the most minimal one, stage one, below 50 microns, or 0.05 millimeters, all the way up to stage four, which is basically um, too late. Connection of fissures to open uh, larger cracks. Some examples of industries where we can find it, and some examples of failure as well. Uh, refinery, fossil fuel processing, uh, fertilizer, where ammonia is produced. New inspection approach revised by API 941. Um, there we go. So historically, or traditional, ultrasonic methods of characterization uh, were divided into uh, five or four different ones, basically. Uh, you had the method of velocity ratio, where you measure the longitudinal wave velocity and the shear wave velocity in a clean zone of the material. 
And if the ratio between S wave and L wave changes, that's an indication of uh, HTHA presence. Sorry. Uh, attenuation, of course, if the ultrasound beam has to travel through a uh, colony of HTHA, then the resulting back wall amplitude is going to be uh, weaker. Uh, I said five, basically four, L wave and uh, shear wave spectrum analysis. So by uh, monitoring the frequency uh, spectrum of the signal that is uh, inside the material, whether it's L wave or shear wave, uh, you can also detect the presence of uh, HTHA. Then finally, conventional single element A scan backscatter pattern recognition, um, amplitude based pattern recognition, spatial averaging, uh, directional dependence, frequency dependence. Okay, <laughs> sorry, I'm not very, um, I'm not very common with this one. A uh, combination of these techniques is historically used to assist in characterizing an HTHA from other flaws. Uh, it's a screening tool. You can uh, find it. You can different or you can um, discriminate be between HTHA and other flaws using these methods. Reliability and repeatability, as stated here, whoops, pardon me, are very dependent on the operator's skills. So two person uh, doing the same inspection might have two different results. Limited data collection for monitoring purposes. Typically, it's uh, those methods require um, an on-the-spot call, and you have very little uh, data to base your analysis upon. Uh, you basically have to have faith in the operator and his uh, reporting. Also, it is very time consuming because the footprint of your transducer is going to be smaller and you have to basically uh, scrub the entire area or zone for, for detection. New inspection approach. Uh, we have different methods that were added to the uh, Article 1 and 4 appendixes. Toft, time of flight diffraction, phase array, uh, whether it's pitch catch as represented here or pulse echo as represented below. FMC TFM, another uh, method I think that most people or more and more people are getting familiar with, but we'll go over the um, basic ABCs of these methods in future slides. What do they have uh, all in common? They use higher right here. Highest practical frequency, seven and a half to 10 megahertz to obtain uh, the maximum detection sensitivity and uh, resolution for micro damage. Time of flight diffraction. What is time of flight diffraction? It's a pair of conventional UT transducer uh, fixed with longitudinal wave um, wedges, shoes facing each other and sitting on the same surface of the material. Uh, you have the direct path, that is the um, lateral wave, and the skipping at the bottom, that is the back wall. Uh, while scanning, the pair remains at a fixed distance. And typically, the result is uh, an A scan combined with a grayscale image, uh, typically B or D scan. Why would we want to use Toft uh, as a screening tool, primarily? Uh, usually, the spec will perform a scan on the base material first and then on the weld to have a good understanding of what's going on. It's also uh, common to have two different groups with uh, the, the lateral wave amplitude being higher and lower on each of those groups, about 50% full screen height compared to 100% full screen height. We'll see uh, what benefit this may bring. Why Tuft? Because it is fast, first of all. Then also a very sensitive method. We uh, don't use 
pulse echo reflection for uh, the tough technique. We use diffraction. So it's very, very sensitive to smaller voids. Um, uh, yeah, They're highly sensitive. And it's also used as a screening method. Well, basically, repeating again. Uh, phase array ultrasound. What is phase array? What's the advantage of phase array? Uh, what it offers over conventional UT is that from a fixed position, you can have multiple angles covering a wider area. You can, uh, can also um, combine different element input to focus at different, at different depths, uh, given that we are working in the near field. Phase array can be used as a confirmation tool, confirming tool. Once the initial screening is done with Tuft on both parent and weld, the inspector will confirm findings using phase array ultrasound. Why should we use Tuft first? Because phase array um, will be used at uh, with the appropriate settings, meaning appropriate angle, appropriate focusing depth as well to have the maximum uh, resolution and um, sizing capability. Uh, so since TOF is limited uh, at finding the index position but provide accurate depth location, FISRI is useful tool to re-examine the components while using the depth information from the TOF finding to focus the phase array beam at that given depth. Basically what says above. Uh, full matrix capture TFM. This is the uh, latest in those technologies, uh, ultrasound applications. More and more people are getting familiar with this uh, method. The main advantage of uh, TFM over phase array is going to be uh, the quality of the image, uh, the, the truthfulness of the representation compared to what's actually in the part. Uh, also, as I mentioned, phase array, you have to predict or, or input a certain focus depth for your uh, inspection to be as uh, precise or as sensitive as possible. With FMC, your entire grid of point is focused, again, given that we are working in the near field. Um, so confirmation tool, just like phase array, as I said, with better imaging. Um, one of the advantage of the Omniscan X3 is that although uh, you can have a 32-128 model, meaning a maximum phase array aperture of 32 elements, the um, instrument is a PR. So through extended aperture, we can also we can actually generate a true 64 pulsar TFM signal without the need for a 64 uh, element instrument. Why would we want that? Basically to save cost, save money. So this technology with the recommended TFM 64 is available at a lower price, basically. Um, for the purpose of this uh, call or and further demonstration, I'm only going to be using one wave set at a time, uh, but you can program more than that and have the input of uh, various wave sets, various uh, TFM modes, basically. Um, to complete this HEHA offering, uh, and I will also demonstrate them later, we also have a complete line of 10 megahertz uh, probes that are pulse echo as well as pitch cache through uh, dual linear arrays. Uh, the table from the API, basically, here is the comprehensive uh, summary. So all that I said earlier, uh, Tuft, high frequency increased capability for detection of HTHA in the weld. Uh, detection capability is effective, can detect HTHA in base metal, weld, heat affected zone, as well as the weld itself. 
usually effective for length and depth location, uh, height sizing, but not effective for precise location and sizing width-wise, uh, particular to the direction of uh, scanning. So basically, if your probes are moving in that direction, the position of the HEHA um, colony is not going to be super precise using TUF in this direction. Phase array ultrasound, uh, whether we use longitudinal wave or shear wave, uh, 1D linear probe, 2D matrix probe, uh, pitch catch, uh, all those are available. Pulse echo scheme using higher frequency sound increases capability for detection of HTHA in base material and uh, weld. Uh, detection capability usually effective, of course. Can detect HTHA in base material heat affected zone as well as the weld itself. Same as for tough, usually effective for length and depth location, height and width sizing are also uh, much improved when appropriate inspection setup is used. So again, going back to the previous slides, we use Tuft for fast screening to uh, get a ballpark or, or location of where the uh, cluster might be situated. So we can come later with an additional technique such as phase array or FMC to confirm those findings and also uh, to further improve in terms of uh, width sizing. Because we can focus at the right depth, have the right frequency, and so on and so forth. Um, FMC or TFM advantages over phase array. Imaging, whoop, I always forget that I can't click. Imaging scheme that involves computation of focused image at every point of the image region. region. Um, so better imaging, better uh, knowledge of better interpretation of uh, what the, the, the flaw might be. And for the rest, it's equivalent, if not better, than phase array. Why would we want to use Tuft? Uh, OK, so high inspection speed. Thing to consider. Um, the lateral wave as well as the back wall are basically dead zones or zones where you're blinded by uh, the very strong direct and skipping signals. So keep that in mind uh, when you're screening for HCHA. Uh, if it's very close to those surfaces, you might not detect it. Uh, so for that reason, as well as a confirmation reason. Supplemental technique as phase array or FMC should be considered where uh, damage within those blind zones is a concern. Phase array as well as TFM will achieve their uh, greatest effectiveness in the near field of the transducer. Um, typical minimum of 32 elements for thicknesses below one inch and 64 for above one inch. Same goes for uh, TFM, except that we're using 64 elements and 10 megahertz, of course. Characterization capability. Uh, with a combination of these techniques, proper characterization between HTHA damage and large fabrication flaws, uh, such as lamination in base metal, lack of penetration, lack of fusion, uh, slag, porosity, inclusions can be effective through indication location and pattern recognition. One of the most common questions, how do you distinguish HTHA from inclusion or um, porosities, impurities? It's very difficult. Okay, not gonna lie, it's very difficult. There are some uh, patterns that can be used, which, which I'm no expert by any mean, but there are some patterns that can be used to determine which is which, uh, also the location. But that's one of the very uh, big challenge of this uh, this kind of inspection. Uh, difficult to distinguish HTHA induced cracking versus cracks induced 
with potential other damage mechanisms from uh, one inspection data set. Again, why we want to use more than one method. Uh, with phase array, with Toft, uh, with also proper uh, ultrasonic or phase array instrument, you can record your data, uh, have it encoded and, and uh, go back to your data, monitor the growth over time, which is a key advantage compared to uh, the conventional or historic methods. Uh, the fundamental principle of historic uh, characterization techniques are still applicable, of course. Uh, it's not because we have something new that we have to ditch the old methods. They, they, they used to work, they still work. But uh, those methods that I talked about are basically new tools in the toolbox to improve on efficiency, um, precision, uh, sensitivity, and so on and so forth. So what uh, do we bring to the table? Um, a combination of the Omniscan X3, as well as a new line of 10 megahertz probes uh, dedicated or designed for uh, the inspection of HTHA at uh, their early stage, basically. Um, dual linear arrays and total focusing methods probes, um, of course, they can be used with phase array and TFM as well. If you use uh, the 1D linear probe uh, for pitch and catch, uh, you can use phase array. Uh, greater detection capability, DLA technology, higher gain can be used. Small elements equals greater focusing, higher frequency equals greater resolution. Uh, smaller element improves steering for greater coverage of the weld and the has. Uh, we'll see in the second study case uh, an example of a weld inspection. During the live demo, I only have uh, zero degree. Those, uh, those samples are quite uh, hard to come by or quite difficult to come by. So we're, we're very lucky to have one today. Uh, higher probability of detection using my te the multi-technology approach, um, of course. And also one key advantage of these probes, they're all directly configurable on board the X3. No need for external calculator, um, no need for uh, shuffling between the, the computer, uh, the shuffling the files between the computer and the instrument. All is on board the uh, X3. So the line of probes in more details, what do we have uh, with the dual linear array? A28 probe from one to 32, 33 to 64. So two 32 element probes for um, a pitch and catch inspection. They run on a PR unit, of course. Um, we have different wedges with different roof angles adapted for uh, different depth of focusing of, of on the passive axis, uh, different curvatures also of pipes. But through uh, a patent, patented uh, pivot system, we also, we just have one casing for that probe. Um, traditionally, those pitch and catch transducer use two separate casing or boxes basically screwed on the wedge and that increases the gap between the two elements by having uh, all of this encased into a single probe we can get them closer and have uh, better acoustics um, so all right okay which series yes of course um, we have the focus depth uh, 25 and the focus depth 60, if I'm not mistaking, uh, line of wedges. Uh, and they're ideal to cover a range of thickness from four millimeters all the way up to uh, 95 millimeters. Irrigation ports and carbides, just like we find on all of our phasery wedges. Mounting hole for scanners 
and also uh, curvature is available from four inches all the way up to flat. <clears throat> Dual array, the Rex one line of probe, zero degrees. So this design uh, might seem familiar. It's basically the same casing as our uh, seven and a half megahertz corrosion probe, but this one is um, 10 megahertz first, and also has uh, 64 pulsers and 64 receivers. So twice the elements in the same casing, that means there are twice as small, increasing our um, increasing our uh, resolution with, with ATHJ. <clears throat> Finally, um, similar to the uh, 10 megahertz Rex one, we also have a 10 megahertz A31 probe as well. Same, uh, I mean, similar to the other one because we use the same casing as the regular A31. Actually, I have those two sitting next to me. Um, where the regular A31 might be, uh, by heart, I would say 0.6 millimeter pitch. Um, if we double the elements, the size of the elements is divided by half. So uh, again, it helps with uh, the sensitivity or resolution of uh, smaller defects. You can find all of those uh, details directly from the website. We have uh, a brochure uh, listing all of those details, but you can also reach out to uh, myself or your local, rep sales, local sales representative for uh, more info or, or um, perhaps demo. The Omniscan X3, um, so the maximum PRF of the instrument is uh, tripled compared to the previous generation of Scan MX2. So you can achieve faster inspections without being limited by the instrument. Uh, the Tuft menu is a single Tuft menu now. So no need to navigate from one step to the next to the next for a simple Tuft. All is um, under a single menu. Uh, faster or improved phase array calibrations also 800 high amplitude range. So the Omniscan X3 is a 16-bit instrument, meaning that there are two at 16, so basically 65,000 counts. Um, the standard mode is the zero to 200% mode. It can be extended all the way up to 800%. Uh, so you do not saturate your signal when uh, scanning with those higher scan gain. Uh, and also compared to the previous generation, of course, onboard DLA and DMA calculator. What does the TFM bring? Uh, better flow imaging, so clarity and resolution to smaller defects. Uh, imaging will help with early stage HTHA. Um, Onboard acoustic influence map, the AIM. Um, so you can simulate your inspection before actually going on the part and performing it. Um, one might think, okay, so I can just create my group and test it. True. But uh, the AIM accounts for probe and wedge, <clears throat> um, material, material attenuation, it accounts for uh, the type of indication, whether it's uh, round or linear, and also the angle of uh, those reflectors. So you would need uh, either one major uh, demonstration block or a, a, a huge briefcase full of them to be able to do what you can do with uh, the AIM uh, software. Uh, visualize TFM sensitivity and adjust accordingly. So, going hand to hand with the aim, with the aim. Sorry, uh, you also have an indicator of how strong or how uh, likely you are to get signal in the particular zone that you're inspecting. Um, if you know that you will have a very weak signal, 
maybe it's better to change strategy and adopt a more adequate uh, wave set. Also, uh, we can create up to four TFM modes or four uh, different wave set groups to uh, enhance flaw interpretation, detection, as well as sizing. Study case. Uh, all theory is good, but it's also good to uh, actually see some results. So the first one was done on an artificially artificially cooked HTHA sample, uh, so basically engineered sample. Multiple hydrogen cracks uh, near block back surface, back wall surface. Multiple hydrogen cracks in the first 22 millimeter from the surface. Uh, those were validated through micrographic sample according to micrographic one and two. Um, dimension of the defects, several cracks ranging from three microns to five microns. You can see the micrographic uh, sample near the surface on edge, uh, near the surface with the edge, so everything appears way more clearly. Uh, so test number one, tough time of flight diffraction. Once the setup is done. So that will be your uh, say basic setup with the lateral wave uh, at 20% full screen height. If you increase the gain, and that's why it may become handy to have uh, two separate groups for this inspection. If you increase it and have a 50% um, lateral wave, we can see some uh, diffraction or scattering starting to happen. And if we further increase it to 100 full screen height, now we can actually see where it's located. Um, no filter again, no filter. Uh, another thing you can do to make it more obvious is adjust the color palette, contrast, and brightness. So without saturating the lateral wave, we can get the same effect in this location, of course. And again, through higher gain and adjusting contrast and brightness of the palette. Moving on to a uh, phase array with the DLA probe uh, using 32 element aperture and the full length of the probe, focusing at 40 millimeter deep. So before moving on to the uh, actual block, a bit of demonstration of the sensitivity of the probe, comparing it to uh, a block of side drill holes. So by normalizing the gain, you get that type of indication, very small, very uh, rounded. But the uh, overall signal or the overall uh, noise is in the way. We talk about uh, an average of 10 to 15% noise compared to a 40% high HTHA signal. Um, what we can do to compensate for that, we can adjust the color palette. Um, remove part of this background noise from the images. Note that it is still on the A scan, so you, you don't delete any part of the signal. It's only uh, visual reference or visual treatment so that uh, it's more appealing to the eye if there are any indications and where are they located. Same thing here, different location. location again, so multiple indications with the background noise and without it. 
and the 2D map, of course, at the end. From phase array moving to TFM, um, in this case, they use the 10 megahertz A31 with no wedge in contact. So we see from the color map that we are going to be very sensitive right below the probe with a sensitivity index of 30. By the way, this is a, I think this number has some units, but the way to use it is to compare one mode or one probe to the next and validate that you have uh, the best possible result. Oh, there we go. With wedge, without wedge, pardon me. So as I was saying, uh, if you're in direct contact with the part, you don't lose any sensitivity or any energy or any part of your near field in the wedge. You have a much higher sensitivity index compared to uh, with a wedge. So define the zone in the X3. Validation on the same block first. As you can see, the holes are much rounder and much more accurate to the, the um, real life flaw uh, than with the phase array previously. It means that when moving on to uh, the part to inspect for HTHA, you get more accurate results as well. And side view, so scanning from left to right, and a TFM end view. So here's a summary of the same zone viewed by three different methods. So going back to uh, the theory before, what we would do is first screen with Tuft, adjust it, gain contrast, um, contrast and what's the other one, brightness also, to uh, maximize our detection of HTHA cluster or uh, colony, then go on with phase array or TFM to uh, actually further confirm and size those indications right there. Moving to a weld. Uh, first, again, starting with time of flight diffraction. So 50% uh, full screen height, lateral wave, no filter. We see all over the, the, the middle here between the uh, lateral wave and back wall. Increasing the gain, increasing the amplitude. It's getting more obvious. So we have to look between, we know we have to look between 12 and 16 millimeter deep inside that weld. So when the time comes to focus, we focus directly in that zone at 15, uh, using a sectoral scan configuration like that with the uh, A28 dual linear repro. We can go back on the block, confirm our sensitivity, and then moving to uh, the inspection self. So with the um, the calibration being done on those sidereal holes at 35.5 dB, we get that type of very weak signal through either uh, scanning gain or analysis gain, software gain, whatever you want to call it. We can increase it and make this trail of uh, indication way more obvious. Okay. Um, so you can analyze it from one to the next and again. Comparing this to um, TFM using the A31 uh, linear probe, using TT or shear wave, basically pulse echo uh, method, sensitivity index of 20. So you see that we are less sensitive with an angle beam uh probe like that than previously when we we're sitting directly on the part firing at zero degree which is 
quite normal. Validating on the calibration block once again. Then moving on to the inspection. Some uh, visual or, or um, color filters can be applied to make this a little bit more obvious. But here, here, here is our trail of HTHA, like we saw with uh, phase array. Confirmation with Tuft, validation with either phase array or TFM. In conclusion, uh, TOF detection capability is usually a very effective tool. TOF is primarily a screening and exploring tool. It's limited for a single uh, side access, so pipe to component, for example, uh, because if you want to inspect a well, well, you need the, each transducer to be sitting on either side of uh, that said weld. Phase array focus needs to be adjusted carefully with information provided by Tuft. Uh, phase array, DLA 10 megahertz probe and A28 probe provide the best SNR. TFM is another confirmation tool that can provide better resolution by uh, the technology that we use. Uh, TFM frame of wave uh, modes or wave sets need to be selected carefully. Um, going back to slides here we have a linear probe we have a shear wave wedge must be uh, well you can select L wave you may not have the best results in the world of course uh, TFM is no uh, magic so that's why having a tool like the aim helps in um, preparing your scan plan up front of your inspection Uh, and in conclusion, so the fundamental principle of historical characterization techniques, uh, backscatter, signal pattern recognition, uh, FFT analysis or frequency spectrum analysis, velocity ratio, they used to work, they still work, and they can assist with those uh, updated techniques or innovative techniques um, to improve capability and confidence for characterization between HTHA and other damage uh, mechanisms. Now the fun part. Moving on to uh, the live portion or demo. So I have set up three different groups on my Omniscan X3 to tackle first the um, phase array portion of the demonstration. I don't know if you can see, but we have a block here that has very tiny holes, basically simulating what we can find in those type of inspection. And also, uh, as a bigger one, we have another sample that is uh, cracked pretty badly. So we will validate what's in there, what can be found, and how good of results we can achieve. Starting with the uh, regular probe, because we have to have a baseline. And you can see that I'm using um, phase array, zero degree probe and wedges. But instead of uh, creating a, a direct zero degree linear scan, I, and that's a personal preference, I prefer to use a, a range of angles using L waves from a negative 30 to plus 30 degrees. I find that it does uh, a very great job especially on the sample that I have today. So a little bit of coupland or water on the sample, moving it up and down, trying to find the spot. That sample is quite thin. So if you look at the S scan, well, those are the type of result we get with the 5 megahertz 32 element uh, A31 probe using a 32 element aperture focusing at 18 millimeter deep. Okay, so 
changing this probe now for the 10 megahertz 64 element version there we go cranking up the gain a little bit so straight away we can see that the holes side drill holes are more well-defined well-rounded and also uh, we can count more of them as with the previous probe they were uh, they weren't resolved one from the other now from here moving to the a28 dual linear probe Uh, element one is this one. A little bit more water. What is it? No. Oh. So just have to maximize it. Apply some gain. And again, we have great results using this probe so that's all good everybody can do it on uh, side drill holes what about the real part moving on to the next one so i'm going to do the same um the same progression starting with the five megahertz 32 element one which is this one right here Now we are a bit hot because I moved to those parts. Looking at the S scan as well as the B scan that is scrolling uh, at the bottom of the screen. We can actually see, well, of course, that's a blister right there. But we can actually see the connection in between and some granularity or some isolated defects, which may or may not be an HTHA colony. Moving to 10 megahertz. Again, can lower the gain a little bit. So straight away, I'm in the same spot with the same blister on top, the same indication underneath. We can see a clear difference in terms of resolution compared to the five megahertz. Everything is more crisp. Everything is more well-defined, well-rounded. Uh, Especially here. Finally, the pitch and catch. So moving to the DL dual linear array probe. Going good day again a little bit. Just look how beautiful that is. So we have that blister. We actually what we could see as a single red blob with the five megahertz. Now we can see all of the detail with the A28 and the zero degree wedge. Actually, that probe was designed to do angle beam inspection, not so much zero degree. So perhaps 
I'm helping my case doing a sector like I'm doing, but it was really designed to do weld inspection, um, going from low angles to high angles. I think we're doing a pretty decent job here in this area where clearly we have a problem. So that is for phasery. We also spoke about uh, TFM. So I will demonstrate this one as well. Starting with the 5 megahertz A31. And you might wonder or ask why a 5 megahertz uh, A32, why not uh, 5 megahertz 32 element, why not a 10 megahertz 32 element? Well, simply because the 5 megahertz 32 element is our go around common probe uh, for weld series probe that we use on the various uh, on various applications, on a wide variety of applications. So you are likely to find it at your place as well. And also we want to today show the improvement uh, 10 megahertz can bring over the standard probe and also smaller elements, uh, actually half the size in this case. So actually I didn't show the little tiny dots before. Here we go on the block with the side drill holes. I have to stay in my sensitive zone, sensitive area. So depending on if I move left to right, I'm going out of my sensitivity area, but when I'm in there, the side drill holes are pretty well defined. And if you're wondering at the top here what's happening, it's because my wedge is actually wider than the block that I'm using. So there's water dripping on either side and it's causing all those uh, ripples. Now moving to the block, lowering the gain a little bit. We can see that it's an improvement over the uh, Pulse Echo Phase Array for sure. But I think we can do better than that. Still working in the same area or the same indications. So from this probe, I'm going to go ahead and select my 10 megahertz. Also in the presentation you saw in the case study, um, Sabri and his, uh, his team did not use any wedge on uh, the probe. Of course, that helps uh, transmitting all those, uh, all this near field inside the, par the part as I, as I mentioned. But um, since probes are quite expensive and you're very likely to use it with a, a shoe attached or a wedge, I figured uh, that it might be good to actually demonstrate this with a zero degree wedge rather than without. Again, going on the same block with the same water dripping on either side. Left to right, just maximizing it. There we go. Looks pretty decent. Now, if we move on the part, drop the gain a little bit. Same effect as before when comparing phased array pulse echo between the uh, 10 megahertz and the 5 megahertz. Now with TFM, the main advantage uh, of this probe over the other probe, smaller elements, uh, higher frequency. And also, now we have a 64 element probe compared to a 32 with the other model. 
So I'm actually creating a full 64 TFM right now, which also helps and improves on resolution as well as sizing, right? And just like that, that's it. Okay, so that was a presentation. Thank you, everyone.